Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. So I'm Johnny Hazel and this channel is dedicated to all things powerlifting and strength training. Now to kick off the launch of this channel, I'm doing a series reviewing free online powerlifting programs. I've already done all the novice programs and I'm now progressing on to intermediate programs. And this is the first intermediate program I'm reviewing. So let's get started. So this is the six week Johnny Candito strength program. It's a really good program for a novice to start, uh, intermediate lifter to start with. Johnny Candito is a powerlifter, uh, quite a famous one at that. He set up a YouTube channel many years ago. It was very, it's it's very pop. It was and it still is very popular. And he created a series of free uh, programs that you can download. I've included the link to his website in the description below as well as his YouTube channel and also the link to the, a PDF file that explains this program from his perspective, not mine. So the first thing you must do is enter your start date for the program. So the date that you want to start this program. Now it goes Monday, August 22nd, 2021 here. So we're doing month, date and year, the American style. And the next thing you need to do is choose kilograms or pounds. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Right click, uh, left click here, and it has a, a drop down menu option of kilograms or pounds. Next thing you're gonna do is enter your one rep max for the bench. So let's just say 230, squat, say 500, and deadlift, let's say 750. They're just random numbers. It's not exactly my, they're not my one rep maxes. Once you've done that, you then have to choose your preferred accessory exercises. Now you've got an upper back horizontal pulling exercise, you've got a shoulder, and you've got an upper back exercise that is a vertical pulling exercise. Now you will notice there is nothing for the legs. These are all upper body. The reason being is that Johnny believes that the squat and the deadlifting in the actual program itself provides more than enough uh, volume to create not only just strength adaptations, but also hypertrophy and help you gain some muscle mass. That is why he has not included any. The next thing you have to do is choose which one you would like to do. Now for the upper back, the horizontal pulling exercises, you have three choices. If you were to ask me what one is best out of the three, it would be the Pendelay barbell rows. It is the best exercise really for the back out of the three options they give you. And it creates mass in the back, but also massive strength carryover for the bench press, but also for the deadlift. The second accessory exercise to choose from is for the shoulders. Now you've got the seated dumbbell overhead press, standing dumbbell overhead press, the military press, and the lateral dumbbell side raises. Now, if you were to ask me which one was the best, I would say the military press. This is a strict press, meaning you cannot push press the bar up, and you are using a barbell, even though it doesn't state that. It's implied. That is my option. Now, I believe personally a lateral side raise is better suited as an assistance optional exercise as is a seated dumbbell press and I believe if you're going to do a standing overhead press you might as well use the barbell rather than the dumbbells in this situation. Now the final one is upper back two but this time it's a vertical pulling exercise. You've got three choices. Again a lat pull down to me is more of an assistance exercise, an optional one for hypertrophy rather than strength. I believe it should be between a weighted pull up or a weighted chin up. Now weighted implies this is not a body weight. You have to attach some weight to you and pull up or chin up. I believe out of the best, these two, the best is a chin up. And I will do a video later on explaining why I believe the chin up is superior to the pull up for powerlifters. But for now, I'm gonna select that and say that's the best option. We will talk about this later, this section right here. For now, we will leave this undiscussed right week one you kick it off 
with the program with some muscular endurance training, conditioning training. This is focusing more on muscular endurance uh, and some hypotrophy. And he believes this is the moderate difficulty, so it's the easiest week of them all, um, which it is by far. Um, however, it's not complete. He hasn't used the word easy because it isn't easy. Nothing is easy in this program. But it is the easiest week out of all six of them. So we're going to start on a Monday. Makes sense. Uh, you're doing four sets of six for 80%. On the first exercise which is the squat and then just two sets of six for the deadlift for 80 percent and then you have two optional exercises for the lower body day you only do three sets anything that's been blanked out in black means that it's you do not do a set for that so my advice the reason why he hasn't included any number of reps that you perform each set is because it really depends on what exercise you are doing. If you are doing something like leg extensions or leg curls or even a leg press, you'll probably want to do maybe three sets of 15 to 20 with some lightweight focusing on just getting that muscle pump um, and just creating more hypotrophy in the quadriceps, in the hamstrings, or even if, you know seated calf raise to keep calf raises for the calf muscles. So that's why it hasn't stated it. Whereas if you were to do maybe lunges or Bulgarian split squats, maybe hip thrusters, you probably want to do fewer reps. Just three sets of eight would be sufficient. So that's why I believe that's left blank and down to the user's initiative. Day two, bent is the upper body day. So we've got the bench press, which is the main, the first lift you do, the competition lift, the main lift. You're doing um, four sets of six to 10 for 50 to 77.5 percent of your one rep max this program does not use the training max um, the, the theme of this program in general is you start with lower intensity higher volume and then each set the intensity goes up the volume declines okay so in this week we're really doing more volume as you can see we're doing 34 reps for the bench press we were doing 24 for the squat so this is a higher volume training week for endurance and conditioning. You then do your barbell row, your so your your accessory upper back exercise, your shoulder and your accessory upper back exercise too. Um, and again, we're doing high volume. This is 42 reps in total, anywhere from four sets uh, of eight to 12 reps. Bench press, session, second session. So you've literally got one day off and you're back on the bench and upper body exercises again. Uh, and again, it's for the same number of reps and sets as you did on Tuesday. So we don't need to talk about it again. And come Friday, so the next day you do your second lower body day. Where you do squats for four sets of eight at 70%. And two sets of eight deadlift at 70%. And your optional exercises. Saturday is the final upper body day of the week. So you do three upper body, two lower body. Um, here it's slightly different than the previous two sessions for the bench. You're doing MR, which stands for max reps. So do is the maximum amount of reps you possibly can. And that's at 80% of your one rep max. You then do three sets of six to 10 for the barbell and four sets of eight, four sets of eight for the shoulder, military press and the weighted chin ups, if you chose those exercises. So that's week one done, talked about, discussed. We'll go to week two, which is uh, muscular conditioning again, but this time hypotrophy. So muscle growth has been brought into the mix and it's going to be slight, It's going to be a bit more difficult than it was the week before. And you can see straight away, straight away why. So the squats you're doing as many reps as possible, but stopping at 10. So max reps, but no higher, no more than 10 for the first set. Sorry. Uh, um, always make sure you do a warm up. Okay, you're at a point now where that should be part of your routine, but Johnny does state for all the exercises you must warm up. And based on how many reps you do on this max rep for 10, it then determines what you do for extra squat volume because 10 reps on itself is not enough volume. So, what you do is you add two five pounds to the bar and then you do five sets of three with just 60 seconds rest between each set. Now that 60 seconds is not optional, it's compulsory. 
okay there's a reason it create it makes it more high intensity intensity it conditions your energy systems and your muscles better so that's the reason why it has less rep um, and you're still performing a total of 15 reps in, in total so if you were not able to complete a minimum of eight reps on this max for 10 you must reduce your one rep max for the squat by 2.5 percent before you go any further However, you still complete the five sets of three, regardless if you did not complete eight reps. So that's important that you make note of that. However, if you've entered the correct one rep maxes here, you should have no problem doing a minimum of eight reps. And then you do the deadlift variation for three sets of eight. Now, it doesn't state the intensity that you would do. As you can see, this has been left empty. You're going to have to determine that yourself. And you also have to choose which variation you would like to choose. You've got an option between stiff leg deadlift, snatch deadlift, deficit or pause. Now, if you were to ask me which is the best one, I would choose the deficit deadlift or possibly the stiff leg deadlift. Um, and people do ask me about this program can I change the deadlift variation each session that I have to do it no direct adaptation you want to be able to measure your progress and spend enough time and energy in developing that exercise so you can actually see if you've incurred any sort of strength adaptation as a result of performing that exercise so you would you have to keep that same deadlift variation exercise consistent throughout the six week program do not change it every session. That's my advice. That's what I think you should do. And I'm pretty positive that's what Johnny would have you do. And no, I'm not referring to myself in the third person there. We do share the same name. That I mean Johnny Candito. And then you have two optional exercises for three sets. Tuesday is the upper body day. And you're doing three sets of six to ten reps for 72.5 to 80% of your one rep max. Now on that final third set, you can see six to eight. Always aim to do eight. Don't set yourself the bare minimum of six because then you might just do five or four reps. It's always better to really push yourself and try on that final set to get that max number of reps of eight. You then do your shot, your your pulling exercise, upper back, uh, shoulder, and then pulling exercise again. Now we're doing fewer reps, less volume than we did the week before because as, as Johnny said, we're focusing more on also on hypertrophy here, not just endurance and muscular conditioning. Take a day off and then it's Thursday, second lower body day of the week, and we're doing max reps for 10. Okay, and we're gonna do a system of what they call back off squats. If you've never heard about this before, you reduce the, the weight by 10 pounds or five kilograms if you're doing kilograms. Um, and then if you were able to complete 10 reps, you do 10 sets of three with 60 second rest between each set. 8 to 9, you do 8 sets of 3, 60 seconds rest. If you completed 7 reps, you do 5 sets of 3, 60 seconds. If you completed less than 7, skip this whole back off squat system entirely and reduce your 1 rep max for the squat by 2.5 for the following weeks. That is important to make note of that. Alright, so that's, that's the system for this one. And then you do the deadlift variation. If you had done the stiff legs on the day before, the previous session, then you do the stiff leg deadlift again. Three sets of eight, 24 reps total. Friday is the next upper body session, doing three sets of six to 10 for 72.5 to 80%, anywhere from 24 to 26 reps. And then you do your pulling accessory exercises and shoulder accessory exercises and your optional exercises. Sunday is you then take a day off and Sunday you do your next, uh, another upper body session. This time you do max reps on the bench just for one set. And then you do three sets of eight to 10, three sets of six to 10, three sets of six to 10, and your optional exercises. So it's pretty straightforward, this concept. Um, yeah, it's a very straightforward program. Now I must bring up two things. Firstly, do not change the accessory exercises on a daily or weekly basis. Keep them the same throughout the program, throughout the cycle. And then if you decide to repeat this program again, then you can choose the, a new accessory exercise. Secondly, optional exercises. Optional means that you can do one, you can do two, you can do none of them. Now, in terms of what exercise you should choose, I have created a sheet with a list 
of options that you could choose. These are ones that I recommend personally. Some of these Johnny Condito brought up as good ex uh, optional exercises, but these are really assistance exercises rather than your accessory exercises. So up to you which one you can choose. You can change them every week, every, every session, every training session. Okay, so that's week two. Week three, we start going into linear OT, the, the linear max OT phase. Uh, it didn't initially state what OT meant. I put in brackets overtraining. So this is what we call max overtraining. It's a principle of using very low volume, but high intensity, heavy weight. It's commonly used in bodybuilding more than powerlifting, but it's a cool thing to bring into a powerlifting program. It's different. Um, now you can see straight away we have no accessory lifts, no optional ones here straight away. Why? Because this is using the max OT training. That is enough intensity by itself. You do not need more volume and more exercises on this day. You're doing four sets of four to six for 85% on the squat and two sets of three to six reps at 87.5%. And it says four to six for a reason, four being the minimum, six being the maximum. Uh, because this is a max overtraining, the goal is to try and really push yourself and get those uh, six reps. Okay, so don't just stop at four. It's max OT training here. And then you take a day off. So we've got one day on, one day off here. Um, and then Wednesday, you do your upper body stuff. It's the same training principle. Four sets of four to six reps at 85% of your one rep max. Aim for six reps. Don't just stop at four automatically. And we can see for here, the accessory exercises, it's very low volume because we are doing this OT style training. So it's just three sets of six for 18 reps. And we've got no optional exercises again. You then do your squat, your day off, and then you've got Friday, lower body again. Squat, just one set of um, as many reps, basically try to get six reps. And all you're doing is just adding five pounds from the previous session. So it was 430, it's now 435. And then just one set of the deadlift variation for one set of eight. Now the final session of the week is the, another upper body session, You're doing three sets of four to six. But all you do this time is you take what you did on Wednesday and add five pounds, which is why it's 200, not 195. So that's why it's got this, why it's called linear max overtraining because you're progressing in a linear fashion. You're just adding five pounds each training session. And that's week three done. Week four is where you start getting into the heavy training now, the max effort training, maximal, maximal training. It's uh, the acclimation phase, it's important. Um, now we're doing four, uh, we're doing three sets of three. Start with, oh, I put 200 in there probably from the previous week previous time I analyzed this program uh, so you start with uh, four, 445 pounds for three reps um, add five pounds and then add five pounds again so that's how that works you're just progressing in this linear fashion 445 450 455 and then you do two sets of six for a deadlift variation the same one you did week one two and three and just two optional exercises and then Tuesday we're doing the same thing, three sets of three, uh, but we start with 87.5% of our one rep max, 90%, and then you just add five from the previous set, so you've got 205. So it goes, that's how that one works. And then you've got your three uh, accessory exercises. We've gone back to doing some more volume training here for the accessory exercises. Why? Because our main lifts, our competition lifts, these ones, we're now doing less volume and higher intensity. So we, we make up for that lack of volume by doing more volume on the upper body um, accessory exercises. Then you do your second lower body uh, training session of the week. This time you're doing uh, one set of 90% uh, for three reps and then you do one set uh, of one to two reps for 95% of your one rep max. So we're at maximal training now. We're training heavier weights, which is why the reps has declined. Again, try to get two reps, don't just stop at one. And the deadlift, we're doing 90% uh, and 95%, three reps and one's two reps. So this is a heavy day, this one, which is why you've got this day off between the two sessions here for recovery. 
and then Friday you do your final upper body session of the week um, and we're doing 87.5% to 95% upon one rep max start with 87 90 and then 95 so this again is a very heavy day uh, the last one of the week and as we can see with the accessory exercises we've got high volume again to make up for the lack of volume that we've got going here we're only doing three reps two to four and one to two the fifth week now before we talk about the fifth week let's just go straight to the sixth week why there's a particular reason now you can see here on the fifth week right here it says one to four reps and there's a reason for that if on week six you do not decide to chase your new one rep max manually by yourself you can use the determining projected max formula so based on how many you lifted on that squat on monday if you did uh, you then multiply it by 1.03 if you completed two reps you then do multiply it by 1.06 if you did three reps and 1.09 if you did four reps so it's important on that on that fifth week to really try and get as many reps as you can don't just stop at one rep because that will determine what your projected determined uh, max new max is your new one rep max is so let's go back to week five so as we can see we start with 95 97.5 percent of our one rep max and we chase it for one to four reps and then we do very low intensity low volume uh, deadlift session 67.5 to 72 percent so very sub maximal weight why because you've got a heavy deadlift session come friday so you don't want to use all your energy on this session right here this is just for volume additional volume bench press same principle 95 97.5 percent of your one rep max for anywhere from one to four reps and then you've got your assistance exercises we've we've gone back down to doing lower volume just uh, three sets of six to eight for 20 reps total. And then a deadlift, one to four reps for 97.5%. So you have to chase that as well. And then we're at week six, the final week. Now, as you said, you've got three options here. You can skip week six altogether and just use this projected one rep max formula and start your next cycle. So just start the whole program again. You can use the projected max for the next cycle, but take a deload week whereby you just repeat week one, but all you do is skip the last upper day of the week, which was the Saturday session. This one right here. So do everything except for that. So it's just four days a week training. Alternatively, you can take this sixth week to chase your new one rep max and do it manually by yourself. Um, then either deload or start a new cycle. My advice would be to take the following week to deload maybe not repeat week one just take a week off altogether for recovery because you spent two weeks pretty much nearly three weeks but definitely two weeks at maximal level so you might be fatigued a little bit burnt out and you need that seven days of recovery and then you can start the whole program again from week one with your new your new one rep maxes make sure to enter your new one rep maxes in here before you begin the program again so yeah, all in all, this program's great. I give it nine out of 10. There's not a lot wrong with it at all. There's a lot going going, going for this program. It's still, after all these years, standing up uh, against all these new style of programs. The only thing that slightly lets it down is that on these um, accessory exercises, you don't have any sort of idea of where to start. It doesn't stay. You don't even get an RPE you know how a rate of perceived exertion scale on what should you do so you have to work that out manually um, and again you don't want to do your true 10 rep max for the barbell here you want to do maybe 10 reps with with two two left over in the back um, because you've got to do four sets of six to ten so you don't want to burn out on the first set so that would have been useful to have an rpe here just to tell you give you an indication of of what weight you should be using um, and also uh, with the uh, deadlift variation, let's find the deadlift variation here. Okay, it doesn't even state here what percentage or RPE you should be using for the weight on these three sets of eight or whatever, how many sets it is in the previous, in the next following weeks. Um, it would have been good here to put a percentage 
Now, I would advise maybe you do 45% uh, of your, your deadlift one rep max, or maybe 30, 45 to 40 as your starting point. Um, and then if you feel like you could do a little bit more than that, maybe 50%. But bearing in mind these, these are variation exercises, meaning they are more difficult than your deadlift. Okay, so a deficit deadlift is significantly more difficult than just a conventional deadlift off the floor. A snatch grip with that really wide grip is, very, is more difficult than a conventional deadlift. So do take that into consideration, which is why I'm saying start with a low percentage, and then that will give you an indication of roughly how many you should do for three sets of eight. So with exception to that, everything else is great. So first program done. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, do turn on notifications because I've got lots of other videos coming. And comment below if you have any ideas on other programs I could do. And check out my social media. And I've got the link for the program, Excel spreadsheet, below in the description. So thank you. Keep lifting, stay strong, and have a good day.